June solstice observations, flat earth and globe earth. In this video, we're going to be measuring the angle of elevation of the sun at solar noon on the date of the June solstice, which is approximately June 21st. The nice thing is you get pretty accurate measurements within a week or so of the solstice. So if you're a week early or a week late, uh, you can get pretty, pretty accurate uh, angular measurements. It's best to do it on the date of the solstice, though. A lot of the content in this video is borrowed from two other videos, the uh, equinox observation and the December solstice observation, both of the angle of elevation of the sun. We're going to start off with preparation and tools before we actually make our measurement. First thing was, we're going to do is we're going to look up solar noon time, and then we're going to make a solar clinometer. So one way of looking up solar noon time is to use suncalc.org. You put in the date of the solstice, and it's going to tell you the culmination, uh, which is the highest point these, um, that the sun reaches. In this case, it is 103 in the afternoon. Or you can use, up, uh, use timeanddate.com. Uh, you put in your location, and you, it'll give you a calendar, enough, a full month's calendar with solar noon for every single day. Then you're going to make a solar clinometer. You need a protractor, a pencil, uh, maybe a piece of cardboard or a sheet of paper, some string, a clip, and some tape. So you stab the pencil through the cardboard, you use a protractor that has a hole for the vertex, and you tape the pencil to the protractor. You want to make sure that the pencil is perfectly aligned on the flat side of the protractor. You don't want it to be even a single degree off because that will affect your measurements. To run the thread through, I, I usually run it right through the vertex hole and uh, so it swings freely using a little toothpick on the other side. This will give you an accurate angle. And then you tie a weight onto the end, or you clip a weight onto the end, and you have a finished solar clinometer. The, there's a modification suggested by Sean Hufford where you use a tube or a straw of paper and a paper screen uh, called a backstop. If you don't have a plastic protractor, you can print one off the internet. And if you want an even bigger protractor for possibly a more accurate reading, you can use a protractor designed for a chalkboard or a whiteboard. The only problem there is that these types of protractors do not usually um, have the, the fine measurement and to, the, to the nearest degree, but you can, um, you can interpolate those degrees. So now that we've done our preparation and tools, we are going to now make a careful observation, and it's really simple. At solar noon, at the exact time of solar noon, on the date of the solstice, you're going to find the angle of elevation of the sun. And you're going to do this by pointing your solar clinometer at the sun. So if you use the, the pencil version, you're going to align the pencil towards the sun. It will cast a shadow, and you want to very carefully align the pencil so that the shadow disappears. If you're using the Hufford mag, uh, modification, you want to aim the straw towards the sun, and you want to wait until the straw uh, casts a, as very little shadow as possible, making a perfect uh, letter O or a nice little circle on the backstop. Once you do this, you take a look at the thread, and you make a reading off of the protractor. So in this case, can you tell what the reading is? It's 68 degrees. Okay, so it's very, very important you understand exactly how to read the, the uh, protractor. So how do you calculate the angle of elevation? It's pretty simple. You take 90 degrees minus your protractor reading. In our example, we had 68 degrees in the protractor. 90 minus 68 is 22 degrees angle of elevation. Now, just so you're not thinking this was an extreme example, uh, my photo was not taken at solar noon. It was taken in the afternoon, so it was just a photo for illustration purposes. So now we're going to analyze our results. Uh, now that you have your angle of elevation carefully measured, you're going to analyze it to determine if, we, uh, if it supports the globe earth model or if it supports the flat earth model. So before we do this, we need to describe what exactly it means to be on the June solstice. Again, the June solstice is approximately June 21st or 22nd each year. In the globe earth model, this means the north pole is tilted towards the sun, and I, I put towards in quotes because the, the North Pole is not actually moving, 23.4 degrees. This produces direct sunlight, sun rays on the Tropic of Cancer. In the flat Earth model, the sun is simply tracing a circle above the Tropic of Cancer. So in both cases, the sun is above the Tropic of Cancer uh, for essentially the whole day. So. June solstice, we're going to do a globe earth analysis followed by a flat earth analysis. 
Before we do the glow breath analysis, I would like to clear up a, a point of misunderstanding uh, about the glow breath model, and that is dealing with the equatorial plane versus the plane of the ecliptic. And some people misunderstand this to be a yearly wobble. Um, and this is actually not the case. So this diagram is accurate in terms of the angles involved. Obviously it is not to scale, but the angles are correct. So in the four seasons of the year, we have the, the, uh, the axis of the Earth, the north polar axis, is either tilted away from the sun, towards the sun, or sort of um, parallel to the sun. So you had our equinoxes and our solstices. So the green uh, plane is the equatorial plane, and then the yellow, um, the yellow arrows il illustrate the the plane of the ecliptic or the orbital plane of the Earth. And these are always at an angle, always 23.4 degrees tilted, uh, in relationship to each other. So when we go over to the summer solstice, that uh, that plane, the equatorial plane, the green plane, is still at an angle of 23.4 degrees with relationship to the orbital ecliptic plane. So the reason why some people think that there is a wobble is they see diagrams like this. And this diagram, it looks like the Earth is wobbling, wobbling towards the sun and then away from the sun uh, over the course of a year. And this is simply not true. What is actually happening is the camera um, or the point of the observer for those diagrams is following the Earth around. And the virtual camera is tracking the Earth so the sun is always to the camera's left. Okay, so here the camera is following the Earth around. The sun is always to the camera's left. So if you take a look at these diagrams, uh, yeah, the Earth will appear to wobble because we're, we're keeping the, the sun to our left. So in this case, we want to start off with the equinox, and then we want to move to the summer solstice. And again, the camera is to the observer's left, so we're just going to focus in on these two diagrams here. Starting at the equinox, with the sun above the equator, we're then going to uh, move into the summer solstice uh, where the sun is above the Tropic of Cancer. So what I'm trying to say is that it's going to appear as though the Earth is tilted towards the sun. Uh, in, in, in reality, the Earth was tilted the whole time. Okay. So here we are on the equinox. Um, the sun is directly above the equator. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place an observer at 30 degrees north latitude. That makes a 30 degree angle with the equator. So if you extend that line through the Earth, you have a 30 degree angle um, as you measure it from a vertical. Now that's very important. It's 30 degrees as measured from the vertical. So if we have a little observer standing on the ground with a flagpole, there's a 30 degree angle measured from the flagpole to the sun's rays uh, at solar noon on the date of the equinox. But we don't want the angle uh, measured from the vertical, we want the angle of elevation of the sun. So we're going to subtract that from 90. So we get a 60 degree angle of elevation of the sun on the equinox uh, at solar noon. But the purpose of this video is to focus on the June solstice. So on the June solstice, we tilt the North Pole 23.4 degrees towards the sun. Again, the, the, the tilt was there the whole time. We're just, our, our, uh, point of observation is changing. So it appears as though the Earth is changing its tilt, but it, it, it is not. So now we're going to take a look at our observer. And again, just reminding you, the angle of elevation of the sun, which is that yellow arrow, was at 60 degrees on the equinox, but now it is pointing towards the sun on the solstice, which is 23.4 degrees higher. So I'm going to say that again. On the equinox, our observer had a 60 degree angle of elevation, but now that it's the June solstice, it's 23.4 degrees higher. And so that gives us our rule. And this works for anybody on the planet. The sun is going to be, the, the solar noon sun is going to be 23.4 degrees northward from wherever it was on the equinox, from whatever measurement we got on the equinox. And that actually works northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. Now let's take a look at a flat earth analysis for our June solstice. So again, just to remind you, uh, on the flat earth map, the sun is simply tracing a circle, tracing a, a circuit above the Tropic of Cancer. So it really doesn't matter which model you use, whether you're going to use the AE map or the, the Gleason's map. Um, 
you, you can actually run the calculations. You know, you can modify the numbers a little bit and, and still run the calculations. But the, the bottom line is the North Pole is in the center of the flat Earth map, and we are going to place the sun above the Tropic of Cancer. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little right triangle starting at the North Pole to the, to the sun and have the right angle be right at the Tropic of Cancer. And we're going to analyze this right triangle. So here we have the, the sun above the Tropic of Cancer. And if you use uh, Samuel Robotham's estimate, and many other uh, learned people in the Flat Earth community have, have estimated this based on careful observations, we have a, an angle, or I'm sorry, an elevation of 3,000 miles for the sun. And again, you're welcome to use your own numbers if you'd like to rerun the calculations. Uh, and then we're going to place an observer at 40 degrees north latitude. So this is uh, Philadelphia. Um, 40 degrees north latitude and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the distance to the tropic the distance to the tropic so we're going to say D is the distance to the tropic and that's a simple calculation 69 miles per degree all right so we actually have 40 minus 23.4 degrees that's how many degrees we are from the tropic of cancer and we're going to multiply that by 69 degrees that's going to give us a mileage and then we're going to uh, have the angle of elevation to the sun and we're going to call that angle theta. Now how do you calculate theta? Well theta is simply the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of 3000 divided by D. All right. Again if you don't like the Gleason map or you don't like the estimate of 3000 miles elevation you're, you're welcome to use your own values from from your own model. You could rerun the calculations. So let's uh, let's summarize. So first, no matter if you're on the globe or, or on the flat earth, you find your degrees from the Tropic of Cancer. We're going to call those degrees T. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, T will be defined as latitude minus 23.4. If you come up with a negative, just simply uh, ignore it. If you live in the southern hemisphere, T will be your latitude plus 23.4 degrees. Now that you know what T is, you can do an analysis. If you are on the globe earth, or to support the globe earth model, your angle of elevation will be a very simple calculation. 90 minus T. If you're on the flat earth, we have to do an additional calculation. First, we're going to calculate the distance to the tropic at the rate of 69 miles per degree. So it's T times 69, and that'll give us the value D. And then we can calculate the angle of elevation by finding the arc tangent of 3000 divided by D. And you're welcome to change 3000 to any other number uh, that you like for your mileage of elevation of the sun. Now, to make these calculations much easier, I've created a Google Sheets uh, spreadsheet. And if you have a Google account, like if you have either Gmail or you know you log in, um, you can you can get a copy of this uh, spreadsheet. Just um, the, the link's going to be in the description. So, what you, the, the only required input, the only required input is the latitude, and it has to be either a north or south latitude. And just for flexibility, some people know their exact latitude in in decimal degrees, like you know, 37.429, you know, you can type that in exactly. Or you might know your latitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds, in which case you can use those three boxes. And then it's going to do all the rest of the calculations, both in terms of globe Earth and flat Earth, the predicted angle of elevation. And the difference is quite subtle. So for somebody in Philadelphia, the difference in the angle is about 4.3 degrees, which is why it's so very important that you try to do this exactly at the moment of solar noon, uh, and you try to do it as close to the um, the solstice as possible because we are literally talking about a difference of only a few degrees between the two models. If you'd like to share your results with others, you can go to our message boards at flatearthmath.boards.net and there is a message board for the June solstice observations. So please feel free to share uh, what results you got, your angle of elevation, uh, your latitude, and any other information you'd like to share. Thanks to Kara Diane for setting up the uh, the message boards. And if you would like more kindness in the world, put it there. Thank you.